Now that earnings season is in full swing, I keep reminding you that we've got a real good setup here because the expectations are very low. Despite this market's incredible rally from the bottom last fall, Wall Street, as I explained at the top of the show, remains enormously bearish right now. People just don't believe this move can last. Hey, by the way, some deny the move altogether. But their very skepticism is what I think gives, well, gives you the fuel for a rally much higher. But I don't want you to take it from me. Let me give you the numbers backing up this thesis as we go off the charts with the help of Carly Garner. She's that brilliant technician I talk about, who's the co-founder of DeCarly Trading, the author of Higher Probability Commodity Trading, which is a book that will put all this in English if you're ever confused. As Garner points out, sometimes market positioning matters more than the fundamentals. What we regard as a bad quarter when everybody's bullish could look like a good quarter when everybody's bearish. And the expectations are already down on the floor here. Think about how oil and gas both peaked last year, just when everybody was most positive on both commodities. Recall that? According to Garner, the same goes for stocks. And she's absolutely right. A bull market can't survive without bears because bears turning positive is what gives us the fuel to go higher. Once everybody's optimistic, there's no more room to run. And the same is true in the other direction. When enough investors have already reacted to a particular narrative, the trend exhausts itself and reverses, often when it's least expected. That's why Garner says it's important not to let an overwhelming public opinion interfere with your view of reality. Remember, when oil was at 120 last year, most analysts were calling for it to go to 150. There were even guys who were calling it to go to 200. Hardly anybody predicted oil was headed for the 60s, but that's exactly what happened. Whether we're talking about rallies or declines, eventually you run out of potential converts and the move loses steam. Garner believes that that's exactly what's happened already, already happened in the S&P 500. Only the bears just refuse to recognize it. Make no mistake. By all accounts, money managers are extremely negative right now. I want you to take a look at the weekly chart of the S&P futures with the CFTC's commitment of traders report data on the bottom. That's the COT report. The CFTC divides traders into three categories. Small speculators, meaning home gamers, large speculators, meaning money managers, and commercial hedgers who need to buy or sell the futures to protect their business. What we care about here are the money managers, the large speculators, and that's the line in green. Garner points out that even as the S&P 500 start rebounding from its lows, these money managers continue adding to their net short holdings on the way up and have maintained that position even as the market's consolidated. That flatly contradicts the widely held view that the market's recent strength comes from short covering. In fact, we've got a net short position of over 300,000 contracts in the S&P futures. This is right here. That's, do you know, right here, see this? That's the largest net short position since 2007. Institutional money managers aren't just negative. They're, <laughs> they're eve of the financial crisis negative. I think that's nuts. According to Garner, there have been three occasions when large speculators got nearly this negative with the S&P futures. Each time we got a nice short squeeze, then followed by a healthy long-term rally. All three of these rallies lasted for two years or more. Two years. So unless some historic financial debacle comes out of nowhere, Garner expects the stock market to experience a gradual push higher as these short sellers gradually throw in the towel and unwind their positions by buying back stock. See, what they do is that they're short futures, they have to buy the futures. If they're short stock, they have to buy stock. That's how they close out their position. It's not the only reason she's feeling positive. I want you to check out the monthly chart of the S&P 500. Now, this is going back two decades, okay? We're really going pretty far back here. Garner points out that the action over this period has created two trading channels with a common border. You can draw the resistance Resistance line of the upper channel, the red line at the top, by connecting the late 90s high with the late 2021 high, okay? The floor of support, the middle line in black, comes from connecting the pre-2007 financial crisis high with the various highs and lows we've seen since then, okay? That floor marks the pivot line between these two trading channels. We broke out above that level in 2020, and it's proven to be a powerful floor of support ever since. In fact, Garner notes that we've yet to see a monthly close below this floor of support in the post-COVID period. For now, the floor of this channel, trading channel stands at 3850, 3850. As long as we hold this level, as long as we hold above it, she thinks we can avoid a nasty market wipeout. Garner thinks it's much more likely that we get a monthly close above 4,170. That would be a very big deal. That's the next hurdle of the upside. That's a pivot line that takes all the way back to 2011. It also coincides with the 20-month moving average. If we can break out above that moving average, she predicts a longer-term bull market that could emerge from the rubble. I'm with her. All at the same time, look at this relative strength index down here, okay? The RSI. This is an important momentum indicator. It's currently hovering near 50 with an upward trajectory, which tells Garner that the path of least resistance is higher. 
longer term, she wouldn't be surprised the SP 500 can break out over 5,000. I'm not. I don't know about that for me, but that could take a couple of years to play it to uh, play out. I just want to say that I think we can take out this level that a lot of the strategists say it's impossible. Now I want you to take a look at the shorter term chart of the S&P futures. Garner noticed that when she, you look at the hideous decline from the late 2021 high to the October 2022 low, it represents precisely a 50 percent retracement of the covid rally. It's very common for a rally to get hit with a 50 percent retracement before resuming its march higher. Although Garner says we can't truly confirm that until the S&P breaks through the next key Fibonacci level, which is around 4,300. So we've got to take that out. It's actually pretty far from here. It just doesn't look far, but it is far. Uh, once we clear that hurdle, then she thinks we're headed for new all-time highs. That's a little higher than the 4,170 hurdle from her trend line analysis, but it's the same idea. Now, if the S&P, take a look at this, if the S&P can clear 4,300, well, she thinks this kind of Fibonacci analysis suggests it could go to 4,500, which is where I think we could go, or 4,800, or potentially even 5,100. You know, these, are, these are just projections, people. Uh, that Before this would run out of steam, she thinks we could get to that. The last one might seem crazy, and it's a little hard for me to go with, but given the widespread level of, of hysterical negativity, like 2007, Garner says it's probably more likely than you believe. Hey, one last point. 2023 is what we call pre-election year, the year before an election year. And according to the Stock Traders Almanac, pre-election years have given us an astounding, get this, average of 70% gain since 1949. I find that dispositive. On top of that, pre-election years after a midterm bear market like we had last year have given us an average gain of 20 percent. So despite all the negativity out there, Garner feeling real optimistic about the rest of the year, which is something that matters when we get these intraday sell-offs or a couple week sell-offs or some stocks are down 10, 11, 12 days in a row. Bottom line, the charts as interpreted by Carly Garner tells us Wall Street remains incredibly negative on the stock market. And that negativity, above all, is what convinces us that we could have a lot more upside here. There just aren't that many bulls out there who could potentially turn bears while there are still a ton of bears who could be kicked, who could be dragged kicking and screaming into becoming bulls. I think she's got a great point. Absolutely something you need to be keeping in mind as earnings season unfolds. Let's go to Myron in Maryland. Myron. Hey, Kramer. I was calling this to ask if you thought at this point McDonald's was overrated or still a good stock to buy. Oh, I like that stock. I, I, that stock's got 300 written all over it, Myron. I got to tell you, it is best in show other than Chipotle, which I mentioned this morning. Uh, and my stop trading with Carl Quintanilla is another one I like. I like Chipotle and I like McDonald's. All right. The charts is interpreted by Carly Garner. It's just all the negativity on Wall Street could be setting the S&P 500 up for a big move higher. Much more mad money. Prometheus soaring huge today as Merck announces it will buy the company for around $11 billion, even though there's almost no revenues. The CEOs behind the mega deal give us a, an exclusive appearance. Then I'm talking about Alphabet's existential crisis. Do you want to know about that? And then, of course, all your calls rapid fire on tonight's edition of the Lightning Round. So stay with Kramer. 